Hi, my name is Gavin Harrison and I'm the scriptwriter for Ratcatcher. Uh, initially, Tom approached me uh, a few weeks ago with an idea for a project and he said that he wanted an idea of a guy in a woods uh, gets from point A to point B and uh, on his journey he beats up a load of guys. That sounds great and uh, I was really up for writing something like that but obviously from a writing point of view you want to make a character that uh, an audience wants to root for. So I was then given the task of coming up with a storyline that fits with that concept. and. Uh, yeah, so that from then I went from writing a couple of treatments uh, of some ideas to come up with a storyline that fits in with the same ethos of what Tom wanted, um, point A to point B, and a lot of violence in between. I've worked with Tom um, previously, uh, both as a writer and an actor. Um, I've written uh, another feature film that we've there's another project that we've got on the go at the moment uh, called Tartarus, a sci-fi horror. And uh, as an actor, I worked on Wasteland, um, voicing the character of George. Uh, which was, again, great fun, and uh, going to the premiere of that was an amazing opportunity to get to, uh, to know the company, uh, to know the light films a lot more. My background initially uh, was in acting. I trained at Lippa uh, for three years in acting, and since then I've worked uh, in a lot of theatres, so the National Theatre, uh, the Royal Indone Gate in Northampton, and for BBC uh, in a couple of uh, uh, films and TV series. Uh, my writing has been just as prolific in a way. I've uh, written a lot of stage plays which have been produced uh, in and around London, uh, across the UK and in Australia. I've got another stage play that's been produced in Toronto this autumn. Um, film and TV writing has been uh, quite, a, quite a fantastic journey as well. Um, I developed a TV series which I managed to pitch to Roland Emmerich in, uh, in LA with Centropolis Entertainment and these guys created Independence Day and Stargate in 2012, Day After Tomorrow. So this is a major Hollywood studio, which I was then sitting in front of, uh, pitching my TV show to them. So it was a fantastic opportunity, and I'm still in touch with those producers, uh, which is an amazing uh, experience for me. Uh, and film writing as well. I've uh, written a couple of films and uh, met a lot of short films as well, uh, which has been produced and uh, screened in various places around the country. So it's been a fantastic journey both as a writer and an actor. When writing Ratcatcher, um, I mean I'm inspired by a lot of films, I love films myself, so when you're writing a, an action thriller, violent film in the woods, you've got to have to watch certain films that inspire you for that. So we've got films like Rambo, Predator, um, Deliverance, all these kind of films that just evoke that feeling that you want to kind of take the essence of that put into your own film. Um, and there's elements of, of that through Ratcatcher. Um, we've got a moment where one of the hunters is all in camouflage and is against a tree and Liam walks past her and her eyes open. And for me, that's, that's Arnold Schwarzenegger in Predator. He's, he's invisible. And uh, there's a moment in, um, in Ratcatcher where they're shooting in darkness and they're going there and there. Again, that's another Schwarzenegger film. Um, I love Total Recall, the original version, and that's when he's got the homing device in the, in the rat. Um, they're shooting at nothing, they don't know where he is. Um, so I put a lot of little homages to the movies that I love in this script as well, that has inspired this film um, and has helped it progress to where it is now. Um, other films like The Bourne Identity, um, Die Hard, when it's against the odds, when you've got one person against an army, that's when it's fascinating, that's when it's fantastic, and that's when it's fun to write and fun to watch as well. With Ratcatcher, um, so with the concept of a guy getting from point A to point B and a lot of violence in between, uh, I had to come up with something that an audience would root for. And uh, with that, I created a story about Liam, who is who takes his brothers, uh, Chris and uh, Richard, to a remote cabin in uh, the middle of nowhere as a, as a retreat, in a way, uh, a way to get away from the city life because uh, of the recent death of their father. And also as a bonding session in a way because these brothers haven't had the best upbringing, they haven't had the best life. So this is a way to kind of uh, wipe the slate clean and uh, try and find a way to connect again. So uh, something that people can relate to, um, family tensions and uh, bonding with siblings. So whilst they're away in this cabin, um, they decide to go on a, on a not very legal hunting trip and uh, that's when things start to go wrong because whilst, whilst they're away, they, uh, they don't realise that their dodgy past, uh, violent past, uh, has followed them there. And that's in the form of uh, Donovan, who runs this very uh, illegal organisation. Uh, and his uh, and his son, Kane, 
who is his right-hand man. And uh, we begin to learn that Liam had this checkered past who he used to work with Donovan um, and do a lot, of, uh, a lot of the stuff that Donovan wouldn't do. Um, and once, since he's left the organization uh, as a form of retribution and revenge, uh, they're going to have these brothers wiped out. And not just one, but all three of them. Um, mainly also because he believes that Liam has uh, ratted them in uh, on a job that they were going to do, which cost them a lot of money and lost on a few guys who got arrested. So there's a lot of revenge um, being felt from, from Donovan and Kane. In a way to make money uh, that they lost, Donovan decides to um, hold a hunting um, experience for seven hunters who have paid £10,000 each to hunt humans, and these humans are the three brothers. So whilst these brothers are away, a lot of traps are set in the cabin and around the area, in the woodland. Um, and it's only when they get back do things begin to take a turn for the worst, and uh, these brothers have to run for their lives, basically, um, as they're being hunted by seven crazed hunters who want to sample what it's like to hunt another person. As an audience member, I'd be very excited about the pace of the film. Um, it's quite non-stop. Um, once it starts, it doesn't stop until right at the end. So we've got the nice build up, the introduction of the characters, and then once the first violent thing happens, we've got a roller coaster ride that these characters take, and it's relentless. It doesn't stop. Um, the hunting is, is continual, and it is violent, and it just takes you on the edge of your seat. So you're watching what's happening, you don't know what's going to happen, you're feeling for these characters, and until right at the end, you, you just realise, oh my god, have I just been watching this? <laughs> Has it been going on for that long and I've, I've been on the edge of my seat? Um, I mean, there have been, there've been action films, there have been violent films happening, yeah, this, that's what happens. But this, this movie, in a way, it's, it just bang, pounds you and pounds you and pounds you all the time, and it doesn't give up until right at the end. I won't give everything away, but it's bloody, and it's gory, and it's violence, and it's sexy. And that's, uh, that's Ratcatcher.